is that I'm so much more than just my resume. Lol, come on. We both know that all these recruitment platforms are only designed for the companies to get what they want. They don't care about candidates like us. <laughs> Not all, buddy. Have you heard of Tag? Karan Roy, data scientist. Tag scored ninety six percent. Interesting. That's me. And thanks to Tag, now she knows all about my functional, behavioral, technical, and all other relevant skills. Tag indeed is a game changer for me. When I signed up for it, it created the structured, validated, and enriched profile mapped across my numerous skills, knowledge base, and work experience, and created a score. My Tag score. The score and profiling help me present my best professional version to any employer. They can easily find what they need, and if I'm the right fit, my profile shows up instantly. This way, Tag not only helps candidates like me land their dream jobs, but also figure out where they stand amongst their peers, and also identify the areas they need to work on. Wow, this is just the kind of candidate I need. I like how detailed his profile is. Should I even interview this guy? See. This is how Tag is bringing clarity, communication, and dignity back for us candidates. It also gives me an access to community of peers, career circles, thousands of jobs, and marquee employers like her to further aid my career growth. Are you kidding me? Did you just get hired within minutes? Good, good afternoon, friends. I, whenever I see this video, I always wonder how recruitment is changing and how easy it is right now uh, for the job seekers in this era of uh, technology and innovation. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for the 18th episode of Career Circus Live. Uh, my name is Naveed Falak and I'll be your host for the today's session. Uh, as you all know, Career Circles are exclusive talent communities by TAG. Uh, where talented professionals like each one of you can connect with industry mentors, career experts, peers, and recruiters. Career Circus Live, an edition uh, of uh, these conversations, which are open, where we bring the best minds and mentors from the industry to share the latest hiring trends and how they are shaping our work and professionals like you. Uh, so friends, without further ado, uh, let's kickstart today's session. As you may know, the theme of today's session is Back to the Roots, New Age Jobs in Agri-Tech and Farm Industry as a whole. And uh, we are joined by a known HR leader from one of India's leading farm and manufacturing companies, uh, Mr. Sanket Patil. Hi, Naveed. Hi, Sanket. How are you doing? So, uh, Sanket is an accomplished HR leader with over two decades of uh, diverse experience. And when I say diverse, I mean it, uh, it is uh, in varied industries such as automotive, pharma, chemical and electronics. Currently, Sanket uh, leads the HR department for m and uh, farm equipment sector and uh, he's leading as a HR head there. Sanket, uh, without uh, me speaking more, I want the audience to listen to you as an introduction and I won't be doing the justice. All right, Navid, uh, good evening and good evening, everyone. Nave, thank you so much for having me on the show today. Very happy to be here. And I would probably keep my uh, introduction very short. I, I would hate to blow my own trumpet. As you mentioned, I would say the highlight you've already talked about. Um, I've had around 23, 24 years of experience into the human resource uh, management field. I'm an engineer by, by graduation and most like a lot of now who decide to pursue management without uh, straight away going into a job i, I followed the same uh, same line uh, i chose human resource management at a time when human resource management probably was not having that much of uh, significant importance uh, i was fortunate to start my career with uh, industrial relations function uh, the er function one of the top, toughest function i would say within the scope of the functions in hr uh, in one of the uh, leading automotive companies tata motors and and then from there i've uh, spent time in different industries you talked about lupin in the pharmaceutical sector general electric company 
in the technology center of General Electric Company. Um, I worked um, uh, for a long time in an auto component supplier, electronic um, and lighting open component supplier a company by name Hella, uh, which is a part of the 4 vr group now. Um, what I would probably make a mention of uh, is uh, the diversity of, uh, of the roles. So I talked about different uh, functions within the HR, industrial relations being one, and then the human resource management, and then the generalist function. But more importantly, the different cultures uh, that I've been fortunate to work with. Um, in my last role, I was uh, uh, working out of the US and my HR team had uh, people who were nationals from Korea, from South Africa, uh, from Mexico, and from, from the US itself. So very fortunate to have worked with different um, people from different cultures. Previous to that, I was uh, located in Germany where I had a good exposure of working in a completely different uh, way of working culture that that we are used to in India. So I, I would say uh, it's been an uh, enriching journey for me. I still call it as a journey. It's been uh, quite a uh, learning uh, journey for me. And uh, I uh, currently now, as I work with uh, the Mahindra farm equipment sector, and this again is uh, a very very different experience um, uh, all through automotive industry and the first time getting a chance to be involved with an industry which is focused towards the farming sector and uh, that is something that i i feel very very satisfying uh, in what the role that i am currently playing so very happy to uh, share this with you and i'm looking forward to the discussion today Absolutely, Sanket. That's why I said I would be doing justice. It's an absolute honor to have you here. Thank you so much again for joining. And uh, in next 40-50 uh, minutes, uh, we are going to bring forward everything related to careers in India's uh, uh, farm equipment sector with our guest. Uh, and this is going to be an interactive session. So keep your thinking hats on. If you have any questions at any point of time, please put them forward in the chat comments window. And uh, I'll request my colleague, uh, Ojasvi, to put them forward towards us. So uh, before we begin, Sanket, I want to show a video. Uh, if my colleague can roll it, please. Since the dawn of time, Formidable energies have controlled the universe. And the most potent and purest of them all is fire. A pulsating force with the power to renew, to inspire, to create, and most of all, to transform. It is this vital energy that has inspired our revolutionary platform, Oja. A name derived from the Sanskrit word Ojas, which means energy. With game-changing technologies in connected intelligence, productivity and automation. The future of farming is here. Welcome to Mahindra Oja, the powerhouse of energy. Okay, before uh, I go into questions, uh, this to me was something directly a clip from a science fiction movie. What is this all about? We are all very excited and interested to know what is this. Yeah, and um, uh, thanks for playing this video and, and asking me this question, uh, Nave. Then I'm very sure a lot of audience who have not heard about um, Oja would be wondering what Oja is. And um, it is. Uh, uh, and purposefully, we selected this bit on uh, uh, of the video on Oja because we wanted to keep it more as a as a uh, message in terms of what technology means for the farming sector. So, if we don't know uh, that this session is going to be about um, uh, farming sector and what kind of technology role, very difficult to make a guess whether this is a a, a video for a product which is the heart of the farming, uh, which is a tractor. So Oja is the recently launched new platform of tractors that Mahindra Tractors has launched. 15th of August is when we launched it globally. Uh, Staker tractor market by storm. Uh, the September sales shows, a, and we just launched it one state. September sales uh, show an overwhelming response uh, to, to this product. And what you in this product we are talking about 
a lot of technology stuff and um, this is a game changer uh, in many ways this is the thar or the suv 700 of the tractors if 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 we could make that, that parallel um oja is a high tech new age tractor uh, which we have introduced and uh, what is what uh, the video briefly talked about it is packed with tech features and there are the three different um, uh, packages technology packages that we talk about one of the packages and let me spend a little a minute just just to uh, just to list down one of the packages that uh, or one of the features that that um, a set of features that that we uh, we have in this tractor uh, what we call as a productivity pack so oja is a tractor which is the the best in class nvh and nvh which is noise vibration and harness um, is not something that we uh, generally talk about in tractor uh, smooth operation uh, never heard of a tractor being uh, seen as a very smooth operating machine however this is best in the class very smooth to work yet the one of the most powerful it has uh, telescopic um, steering and a telescopic steering adjustable steering again not something that that you would heard uh, have heard in a in a tractor it has projector lamps the projector lamps we also realize the fact in many states within india the temperatures are very high and the farmers would want to do uh, to use use it in the farming in the in the evening time in the night time and the lamps which rarely are the focus in a tractor uh, we put together projector lamps in this tractor which uh, gives you a 20 to 30 percent higher uh, luminosity the brightness uh, so comfort from comfort uh, convenience uh, point of view it is it, it is a very very beautiful machine um the second set of features that that we have uh, put together what we call the telematic pack so it is not only a tractor it's an intelligent intelligent tractor it has a gps built in it has a the the owners can control it over my uh, mobile application the tractor can be controlled over mobile applications it has a gps tracking device it gives you service alerts it gives you the level of fuel and the level of uh, or the utilization of fuel the efficiency of the fuel parameters farming industry there is a huge amount of work that is to be done in a short span during the monsoon when the activities are at peak and imagine a tractor breaking down uh, during that week that's that's not a, a month of uh, earnings loss and that's a year of earning loss and that's the importance of uh, the, the the tractor or the farm machinery uh, because livelihood is means of livelihood it's not a means of convenience for the farmers it's the means of livelihood of, for the farmers so if it gives you alerts on the preemptive uh, maintenance so you ensure that your tractor is in the best shape when the peak season comes so that all sets all sets of telematics available and uh, we call it a uh, myoja pack and the third pack equally important is the roboja pack so it's a it's an autonomous uh, uh, a lot of autonomous autonomous features there is a heavy machinery that connects get connected to a tractor those who are familiar with the with the agricultural um, industry or, or the way farming is done tractor is just a machine which is pulling a lot of implements which is actually doing the different operations under farming and these machines are very heavy and the farmer has to connect these different machines now there is an automated way of doing it, electrical electronically controlled way of running the the machines the radius of the tractor the, the tractor goes straight and then it has to take a turn uh, in the field uh, and the radius should be as small as possible uh, again those who are familiar would know that the farmer there's a two there are two brakes in a tractor so you press one of the brakes one side of the wheels get stuck and then you accelerate on the other side and the tractor moves on its own now this uh, there's an automatic braking system in order to ensure that there is minimum turning radius so this uh, the entire uh, tractor is is uh, packed it's a, a four wheel drive tractor the engine option available there is a cr uh, a common rail diesel injection uh, engine available so uh, the most advanced i would say by far i don't think there is a competitor uh, near nearby uh, to this product and that's why we wanted to start off uh, while mahindra farm equipment is not just about mahindra tractor or oja but it is a fabulous machine and uh, just um, just illustrates the technology usage in a product which is traditionally seen as a highly mechanical product and that's why uh, i was very happy that we start this session very apt uh, we do to start the session with 
Sankit, I guess I was not wrong in saying this looks like a clip from a science fiction movie. It, it is absolutely yeah. a game changer. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for explaining it so nicely uh, for our audiences. So uh, let's kick that kick start the session, Sankit. I'll bombard some questions to you, and I hope yeah, it is like that. the audience. Please put your comments, your questions, and Sankit is there to answer. So uh, Sankit, uh, a question related to video itself. While <clears throat> Myoja is coming up with the new technology, right, and things are changing in farm industry as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current job landscape in India's farm industry? um so there there are a lot of traditional roles uh, that uh, that are available in the farming industry today and there are a lot of new age roles that that are available so it's not that the new age roles are completely taking over the traditional roles what what do i mean by saying traditional roles so traditional roles would continue to uh, continue to be there in terms of the uh mechanical aspects of it the production part of it there is an engine there is a chassis there is a transmission system there is a hydraulics all those are there and then those are getting uh, uh the the mechanical engineers the automotive engineers are completely having the set, this set, set of roles there are traditional roles in terms of selling so we still uh, being in the farming industry there is a huge amount of personal connect uh that is still required in order to um in order to uh, make our sale and our most of our sales people are the ones who are the most grounded people who are the who are not the ones who are doing a powerpoint presentation but they are the ones who are actually connected with, with the with the farmers now the new set of so those traditional roles of uh, selling uh, manufacturing selling product development continues to be there what is changing is the new way of um of uh, doing or new way in which the tractor industry is shaping uh just to just to give you some examples now while we are uh, still doing a lot of our sales uh, by way of uh, direct connect connect with the with the farmers there is a lot of uh, usage of technology in order to enhance the scale this is a digital marketing a lot of digital marketing uh, contrary to uh, to belief of many the farmers are one of the most educated people the farmers are extensively using um uh, say a, a facebook or a or a whatsapp uh, and a lot of uh, the selling happens uh, through to these models so we are generating our own app wherein we are providing advisory services to the farmers we are providing um, a, a physical kind of uh, uh, a space to the farmer they can book uh, a, a tractor a lot of farmers in india are still uh, small farmers who cannot afford a tractor a tractor would cost 3 4 lakh 5 lakh onwards and it is not possible for a farmer to afford it but they can un- because the usage is there during the the peak period so they just need to they just need to rent it now can we create a equivalent of an uber or a or a ola for tractors yes we can definitely do we can connect farmers to a lot of other uh, uh, bigger farmers who are, who are in the business of renting out uh, their tractors and that's something uh, that we have so we have now uh, people who are developing apps uh for uh, for uh, uh, putting together those apps uh, for the farmers to make use of the, uh, those apps there's a lot of technology which is coming in terms of how can we make farming more productive how can we make farming uh, uh more uh, less uh, labor intensive but more me- uh, more mechanized and a lot of uh, those aspects for example precision farming for example satellite based imaging uh, sugarcane uh, i let me take take the example of sugarcane sugarcane as a crop um, uh, there is uh, the sugar content in the sugar cane keeps on increasing over a period of time and there is a time when it reaches its peak and if the harvesting is done at that point in time then the yield of the crop is the highest and usually sugar cane uh, the customers for the sugar cane crop is, are the sugar industry so sugar industry is basically take the whole field from a farmer and we reach out to the sugar cane industries or sugar industries and tell them if we tell you the exact time uh, to harvest you can actually get 20% higher uh, uh, output of of sugar and what do we do we use satellite image to take a uh, satellite to take the image of the sugarcane crop using the texture the size uh, the color of the sugarcane through the satellite image feeding it into our uh, proprietary software the it is able to predict with a 95% efficiency where accuracy rather where when is the content of sugar highest 
and then we are able to tell the sugar cane uh, uh, sugar industries to harvest the crop at that point in time and by by that they are able to uh, generate 20% higher uh, yield of the same crop uh, that they would have. so there's a lot of that kind of technology coming in and hence we are uh, working uh, with a lot of uh, people in the technology area uh, to who are experts in writing those codes writing those uh, algorithms uh, which help us uh, in in providing then the return back back to the back to the farmers and then so, so just just a, a glimpse of the kind of various kind of roles in summary there are additional roles which continue to um, uh, to be available but there are new age roles uh, more highly on the technology side that that we see now something just to quick thought me um, as an individual in the automotive and farm industry hiring since last 5 to 6 years uh, uh, when I talk to job seekers, and then you raised a very important point of that traditional jobs will continue while while new one will, will emerge. So do, do you think, and you might relate it to my next question, which I'll tell you, uh, do you think the existing traditional job seekers need to evolve themselves in terms of skills or learning, or, or they should feel safeguarded with uh, wherever they are? And might be related to my next question, which was, uh, what are the current challenges uh, which are faced by professionals in nav navigating their career paths within this industry? Yeah, and you are right. Both the questions are actually interrelated. Um, traditionally, it was seen that the farming industry, the hiring will happen only for of the people who have a background in farming. Or who understand the farming uh, business, or who are connected with the with the with the farmers, with the farm. However, it is no longer the case. Now, a person who has to write an algorithm to determine whether the uh, with the texture and the color, whether the sugar content, how is the sugar content related to that, does not need to know this uh, uh, ultimate uh, understanding of the farming farming industry per se. It is always an added advantage if you understand the the farming business or what are the different. Uh, you know, uh, uh, parameters which govern the farming industry, but it is no longer a must. And which means that the op opportunity for a person who can, who currently is working in a farming could also be somebody who is not connected to the farming industry could also get a job um, into the farming. And we also expect, and Mahindra being a, a group company, which has different businesses, we are present in 11 sector, 22 years. There's an opportunity for people to be moving between uh, between these sectors. So um, while the core remains the same, this concept of selling remains the same. But the, whether the selling is happening for a tractor or happening for a uh, SUV or a or a uh, selling the loans uh, in the in the finance sector, selling remains the same. I think what is required for for the people is not to be too much, um, uh, you know, bogged down by, by the understanding of the uh, industry and the knowledge. I think now, now the the time period is where in the jobs are going to be industry agnostic, and a lot of movement will come in. So what used to be uh, in in the past as a limitation, saying that we will hire in farming only the people coming from farming is no longer the case. Just to just to give you an example, our um, head of uh, uh, farm division, uh, the CEO of the farm divisions, comes from a construction equipment company. Um, uh, who's, uh, who was recently hired at that senior level, our head of international operations comes from a completely different uh, company in, from Castrol Oil, uh, British Petroleum and Castrol Oil Company. So it is no longer that an industry knowledge of farming industry is a must in order to be a successful, having a successful career in farming. And it works the other way also that you, if you work in a farming based uh, role, job, it doesn't mean that uh, the farming uh, that you will not have an opportunity to work in other sectors as well. Thank you so much, Sankeep. Thanks for clarifying to our audiences. And those examples were like cherry on the cake. I am pretty much satisfied. Uh, we, we are talking a lot about the farm industry segment, uh, Sankeep. Uh, just wanted to ask you for everyone on the floor. Uh, can you provide an overview of Mahindra's farm equipment sector core businesses? What is Mahindra into when we talk about farm sector as a whole yeah. and this is my favorite part of the discussion probably 
महिंद्रा हेज बी for the last 5 decades market leader uh, in the tractor industry we are world's largest manufacturer of the tractors so indian tractor industry is uh, the biggest in terms of numbers uh, in the world and we are the biggest in india and so much so we big, big by a large margin we have around 42% market share so uh, roughly to say every second tractor that you on, on road is a mahindra tractor and mahindra is present in the tractor industry uh, through three brands uh, two major and one in a very small way so these three brands are mahindra tractor swaraj tractor and gromax tractors gromax is a very small 1% market share mahindra has a 7% market share swaraj has a 16% market share so these three brands uh, in which we operate and for tractor we do end to end we have a design and development team so a product development team which is we have our own engines so we design our engines we manufacture our engines we have the transmission specialist they we have electrical electronics uh, specialist hydraulic specialist so the entire product development uh, uh, function then we also do the manufacturing so we do our own manufacturing we have uh, five manufacturing locations for mahindra tractors three manufacturing locations for uh, swaraj tractors one manufacturing location for gromax tractors so the entire end to end manufacturing uh including production maintenance uh, supply chain industrial engineering uh the logistics part of it uh, the entire piece and then we do the third part of it which is selling uh and selling involves uh, working through dealers so our uh, selling is on, mostly through the dealers so the, the dealers and finally the after after sales so sales and after sales so sales marketing and after sales is a service we have the biggest service network in india as far as the tractor is concerned so this is the whole scope of uh, activities uh, that we do here we are hiring people for product development uh, for uh, for manufacturing all the related functions of manufacturing for all the sales and uh, marketing related uh, uh, personnel and as well as uh, personnel which are involved in the service part of it then uh, we also now are going into some or oh, not now going we have been present into something which is as you know tractor industry um has been growing uh, but the projected growth in the next say 5 to 10 years is going to be at an average of 5 to 6% um the industry which is going to grow really fast in the farming sector is the implements the tractor as 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 i mentioned earlier tractor is just a machine which is a movable machine which can draw the power and make the things move but in itself tractor is not sufficient in india the track, uh, the mechanization of farming is limited to tractorization but there are the various machines that get attached to a tractor and these machines are called farm machinery or farm equipments so the farming operation uh, goes on in uh, five different stages one of first of the stages soil preparation then then you have to do the sowing then you do the crop care then you do the harvesting and then you do the post harvesting so these are five stages in which the farming operation happen very broadly and each of the stage there is a machine available to automate it or to mechanize it in india most of the time only the soil preparation and you would see the tractor plowing the land the plowers and the and the tillers are uh, attached to the tractors who are which is used for the soil preparation still you would see a lot of people bending down and sowing the seeds um and it's a highly ma- manual work uh, not the most productive and definitely not uh, something that uh, people should be doing it and there are machines there are uh, planters there are uh, transplanters available uh to to plant the seeds saplings uh, and to do it in a very very right depth right spacing so whole lot of machinery uh, is available as far as the uh, as the sowing is concerned harvesting again a lot of work today uh, gets done through tractors you put a harvester and the harvester cuts harvest is a huge machine sometimes the cost of a harvester is 20 25 lakh up to 1 crore machine so harvesting and the the post harvesting piece the segregation of the grain from the from the from the uh, from farm output and then taking the remaining part putting it in a stubble don't burn it what we see as a problem in in the northern part of india because of the burning of the leftovers of 
of the farming we we can easily use it put it uh, put nicely bundle it and use it as a fodder for the for for the for the cattle or it could be used for packaging purposes as well so there is a machine available for each of these operations and these machines mahindra is into uh, all these machines which is called the farm machinery some of it are very very small mechanical parts here we cannot compete with a small workshop which can put a a uh, a plower together just weld to metallic part and weld together so we cannot we we do not want to be there and we are not uh, present there we are present there but by not by way of we manufacturing it this is a trade that we do we buy this stuff and uh, then we are uh, ensuring that the it's a high quality product a high quality uh, supplier and then we are uh, selling it um, under the mahindra or the swaraj brand name the some of the parts like the harvester i talked to you about very complex machine that is something which are designing and manufacturing so we have a separate manufacturing uh, plant in in uh, mohali near uh, sorry pitampur near indore where we are manufacturing it and the third is we are designing our own products getting manufactured through through our contract manufacturers so this farming farm machinery as an industry um is is uh, uh, the second set of uh, business if i may uh, and the third is farming as a service and here we are using a lot of technology we are talking to the farmers um uh, and many at times farmers are very smart very intelligent people um and they do not believe when you say that do this and this will give you higher productivity it has to be demonstrated and we have uh, something which is called a technique block one acre plot where we use all our mechanization and and advanced techniques to demonstrate to the farmers so hold their own farmland and we ask the farmers to give one acre of that plot and we use our techniques and the farmer is able to see how the yield of that one acre plot is much higher as compared to the remaining plot same soil same weather condition but the yield can be improved and that's where they then start believing in the use of technology so there uh, we are using our uh, uh, our advisory services and demonstration uh, in order to influence farmers in order to convince farmers to use uh, mechanization the purpose and let me just uh, quickly end it here there are other businesses within the farming uh, industry that that we have i'm not going into that the agri business where we are doing the irrigation uh, we are doing seeds um, we are doing crop care pesticides so there are other businesses as well i'm not going into detail but let let me just end it by saying the purpose statement that uh, the farm equipment sector has for mainly and the purpose statements is uh, uh, transforming farming and enriching lives so we do whatever it's possible to transform the way the farming is done even oja what you entire technology pack the high tech machine cost wise it is not very different from the cost of a technology oriented heavy uh, tractor so actually it's almost the same cost and you get a highly technology machine we want to democratize technology we want to enrich the lives of the farmer by transforming farm with the purpose uh, that we are working with and all our businesses are focused towards towards that purpose think that was something huge very detailed and in depth and uh, i want you i want you going to be a longer one no, absolutely understand that and for the audience uh, who are new to farm sector uh, mahindra is not only about tractors rather it's a big uh, value chain of the entire ecosystem and and rightly said about the market share sanket i'll just take two more seconds before i jump on to the question whenever i see movies or whenever i go back to my hometown or on social media if there is a tractor 99% of the time it is mahindra tractor which the person is running so absolutely uh, right with that market share uh, coming on to the next question sanket when we were talking about agri tech uh, with the topic which we started and related to the video as well uh, uh, can you just highlight or share some examples of uh, innovative agri tech solutions uh, that are making farming more sustainable and efficient yeah yeah so um i talked to you about uh, oja oja in itself has a built in gps system and and um, all the telematic packages involved in it but obviously oja is launched now and the 99% of the tractors which are currently available are the ones which have been produced from a, uh, from a traditional way or not so highly mechanized what we are trying to do is we are trying to come up with or we not trying to we are already we are already come up with a a, a small equipment uh, which is called a smart kit it's called a krishi smart kit and this equipment is a is a, a small hardware which can be fit into any tractor very very easy to fit under the dashboard it just goes under the dashboard gets connected to the tractor and this is converting a tractor into a smart tractor 
something what what you would say chromecast did to it converting a, a normal uh, lcd into a smart tv uh, by just connecting one additional hardware something similar to that we, what we are what we have done using the uh, krishi smart kit what does it, what does the krishi smart kit do it provides converts the tractor into a smart car, uh, tractor provides the gps capabilities to a tractor it tracks the monitors the health of the tractor it gives you alerts uh, much in advance it tells the person who has rented the tractor no? so, so a lot of our customers are the bigger farmers who have four five tractors which we they give on rent and when they give rent they don't know for what for how, what is the usage been sometimes uh, the diesel is taken out of the tractor so they get an alert geo fencing is there the tractor they say that the tractor is used for farming but then the uh, then the person who's taking the tractor can use it for uh, going into different villages taking people into different villages so uh, this machine is able to provide with all the technological uh, advancement um, there's an app so you put the uh, smart kit and then the app can uh, can track uh, you can track the tractor on your app like just like you would do with your recently high high end cars and no? cars you could just operate from 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 a, from an app so just an example of what kind of uh, technological which is improving the efficiency which is improving the uh, utility um let me talk give you another example of when when you talk about sustainability um a uh, very good example would be um the the work that we do for irrigation the the uh, epc uh, the company which uh, by the name of epc uh, mahindra epc uh, 90% of india's water consumption today is for farm 90% is mind boggling compare that to a us country 36% of the water usage so the water that is used in india 90% is used for agriculture purposes why we need so much of water because we still do uh, agriculture or irrigation by traditional means surface uh, irrigation now the so surface irrigation efficiency is 38% 38% of the water that is uh, used is actually uh, come, comes in handy compared to that a sprinkler uh, uh, way of irrigation improves the efficiency to close to 60% and a drip irrigation improves the efficiency to 80%. Now we are very soon the per uh, per uh, person availability of water is going to shrink drastically over the next as the population grows as the water resources dry up we are going to have very uh, quickly land into a problem where we will not have sufficient water for human usage and that this situation cannot uh, be continued for a long time. we are working in a big way to ensure that the water uh, crop per drop in, improves uh, by way of using smart ways of irrigation drip irrigation sprinkler based irrigation we are also using soil mapping techniques uh, we don't need to uh, irrigate the farm in the same way what it what is required for the entire farmland there are certain parts in the farmland which having a higher con content of water so they don't need to be irrigated uh, in, in the same way so while you are doing your soil preparation if you attach a small sensor into the machine which is uh, through which you are doing the soil preparation it will give you the complete topography of the land how much is the fertilizer content uh, in in the soil how much is the water content in the soil and you can decide how much fertilizer to be put in how much water to be uh, to be used in order to get the same yield so these are different uh, techniques that we are using drones to uh, to in ensure that the pesticides are used only in the infested area and not the entire crop so the drone is able to track it uh, and then attach a spare to the drone and the drone is able to only attack the part which is infested so there are a lot of this technology now this is not something which is very in a very advanced stage india is a country which is still now going from a uh from a traditional way of farming a labor intensive way of farming to a mechanized way of in a smart way of farming but we are driving this uh, initiative and we feel it is not only required to improve the farming uh, uh sector in india but it is required overall for uh, everyone and then i let me come back to the uh, to the purpose of the vision statement that mahindra has only when others rise this philosophy mahindra rise philosophy only when other size will be so our our success is in the success of others and that's where we are also driving this initiative in order to create a better world for everyone
thank you so much sanket mahindra is itself a legacy name and uh, uh, leads the way in driving the change ultimately all these technologies which you mentioned will be game changers and uh, helping uh, on the end user uh, moving forward sanket uh, more questions related to hiring and yeah. and uh, i guess the audience will be excited towards knowing uh uh what kind of career paths are available within mahindra uh, mahindra farm sector can you just elaborate a bit more on that yeah sure uh so as, as i was uh, when i was talking about the different businesses that we have in within the businesses different functions that we have so we have career opportunities for people into diff- in different uh, domains one of the domains is the product development here we are looking for people and i i'm just glancing at some of the questions and try probably trying to uh, also uh, factor that so uh, we we are doing a lot of work uh, in the product development in the areas of engine design uh, engine design uh, we are using a lot of uh, uh, work in the electrical and electronics the component electrical electronic component is is going to be increasing uh, we are doing a lot of work on the telematics part of it so when that the question relating to ai the question related to telematics yeah we are uh, doing a lot of work uh, in the, in the product development side on on those topics um and uh, there there are career opportunities available for people uh, to uh, to get into any of these center of excellence it could be transmission design engine design it could be hydraulics design um uh, and so on and so forth electrical engineers electrical design and electronics as well then we are talking about manufacturing mechanical engineers uh, diplomas engineers in the mechanical area where in we are also upgrading our uh, manufacturing facilities there are a lot of uh, 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 mechanized automation which is coming in the manufacturing side robotics use of robotics especially in the paint area so robotic arms are there uh, in in the paint uh, painting that uh, the paint that that we do for the tractors um, a lot of uh, specialist uh, roles like the paint paint technologist paint um, uh, specialized people in in the areas of paint technology then uh, when we come to uh, or industrial engineering for that matter then we come to the sales and here we are talking about people who are uh, both uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, sales and uh, and market development business development and also in terms of marketing and now as i was talking to you marketing also in the terms of digital marketing we are also looking in a big way how can we have a very big presence in the digital um or in the digital way of marketing those uh, uh, the the traditionally uh, not so uh, fancy uh, products uh, when we talk about the farm machinery and as i said the farmers are highly highly educated and everyone has a mobile everyone has a internet connectivity so they are definitely one of a big way in marketing in future for farming is going to be through the digital way uh, then we are talking about service engineers so here here we are talking about people who have a very a problem solving aptitude understanding of the machine and uh, the the uh, repair repair part of the machine so this is the length and breadth of the activity or or the roles that that are going to be available uh, in addition to that there are a lot of entrepreneur roles so when i talked about farm machinery if uh, if you if you recollect there were three ways in which we are approaching farm machinery one is we design develop and manufacture ourselves but we are also getting the work done through uh, our um, uh, partners uh, our contract manufacturers or we are doing a lot of trading part so this involves a kind of a business leader kind of a role so somebody who's uh, given a responsibility of getting a farm machinery produced and sold so it's a kind of a business uh, business lead kind of responsibility a lot of responsibilities in area of uh, uh, supply chain uh in the areas of component development in the areas of sourcing so i think all the functions uh, that you would traditionally see in a product company there are roles available you know, within the farm equipment sector that was very interesting sanket when you said uh, the role which can be called as entrepreneurship and yeah. and uh, partnering with people i i honestly was not aware about this Uh, when we talk about hiring sanket i i'll just just touch base upon where the industry and when i say industry the entire uh, automotive ecosystem or farm ecosystem is is leaning towards hiring more of gender diversity or or rather i call it that a, as a equal opportunity 
for for the job seekers what is what is mahindra's take on this or or can you share some best practices or strategies that your company is adopting to create an inclusive environment not necessarily towards gender inclusivity be it anything but rather a equal opportunity provider how how do you see that as a hit yeah very very relevant um, question navi thanks for asking it because that is something which is on the top of the agenda for uh, the entire management uh, team at mahindra so first of all we started by defining what is inclusion as, as you rightly saying diversity is a by product of something which is called an inclusion when you have an inclusive way of working then diversity thrives and when we talk about diversity then the diversity is not just limited to a gender diversity but we are also talking about uh, uh, regional diversity we are talking about uh, nationality based diversity we are talking about diversity in terms of age um different age group gen gen z to the millennials to the baby boomers huh? so the entire diversity there and a diversity in terms of people working uh, with uh, people with disability so there, there's a huge change and uh, we define inclusive so first step was to put what what does inclusion mean and for us inclusion means that we value, value the diversity we make each and every individual feel welcome we demonstrate respect not just uh, implicitly but explicitly, explicitly demonstrate respect create a supporting environment and be fair to all so create an equal opportunity of growth and here we have approached in two ways one is that we want to uh, ensure that no none of the roles is seen as a role which is marked only for a particular uh, gender or a region or a uh, or a um, class uh, uh, of, of people nationality of the people we are even going into general gender, gender neutral job descriptions so that that the first way showing, showing that each of the role is open for anyone who is qualified to take on the role of course merit becomes the qualification merit is the sole criteria of selection but from an eligibility point of view each of the role is equally eligible uh second is we looked into the infrastructure we started looking into the infrastructure does our infrastructure provide a very um, convenient opportunity for people to uh, perform we looked into whether we have sufficient number of washrooms available for women or not even if there is one women employee even if there is no women employee can do we have a, a separate washroom created so that when we are hiring that doesn't become one of become one of the factors for people not to feel comfortable uh, working uh, do we have uh, when we make our new plants do we have we created infrastructure that there is a lift facility there is a ramp available so somebody with a disability is able to uh, work through it and this is done through employee resource groups so this is not something i as a as a as a part of the management is designed this is the people who they created the interested people come together create uh, a resource group they decide what is we are trying to support them to make it happen so there is a second bit of it the third bit of it that we are looking at is does our policies support this and i would here mention a little bit uh, on now focusing on the gender, gender diversity part uh, the policy that is that has been rolled out for the women uh, employees in mahindra i think one of the best uh, recently been rolled out there was a newspaper article which uh, talked about it which hailed the kind of uh, policy what does this policy do that the policy talks about uh, uh, three areas first of the one, one of the areas is uh are we able to provide support to uh, to uh, women who have recently become mothers so if the, obviously a lot of companies are providing a crash facility we provide facilities in our most of our facilities have a crash available if not then we are providing um uh, uh, the female employees are uh, can take help of any crash facility we are reimbursing the cost of the crash facilities we are ensuring that the people uh, the women the safe for the safety purpose of the women that they are working within the uh, 8 am to 6 uh, pm kind of a uh, time frame uh, as much as possible however if they have to leave late in the evening or come early in the morning then they are free to book a cab uh, during uh, during those period of time very important uh, period uh, for for a woman is the uh, the maternity period now in addition to providing 26 weeks of maternity leave there is an additional one month of leave that is uh, all, already granted 
uh, to the women employees in case of any complications coming in. We are even providing both financial support as well as uh, 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 paid time off in, in terms of uh, those who want to become a mother, IVF treatment, 75% of the cost of the IVF treatment is, is uh, reimbursed uh, by us. During the uh, during the pregnancy period in the last trimester, uh, women employee can avail up to 600 rupees every day for transport. So be convenient, be comfortable to come to office. If you want to come to office during that period, it will be very convenient. Of course, the reserved parking, which most of the standard companies uh, will provide. If a female employee during the pregnancy period has to travel for a domestic travel premium economy uh, or a, the, the premium seats, uh, are booked for the people for international travels, business class at any level. While for a normal uh, employee, business class is based on the levels of the person. But uh, during a pregnancy period, a uh, female employee traveling will can uh, avail of a business, uh, no matter at what level uh, the employee is into. Uh, our uh, our um, mediclaim policy, in on top of the insurance which provides for fifty thousand uh, insurance for the maternity. We are adding 75,000 on top of it. So 1.2 lakh rupees uh, is the total expense uh, with a special approval. It can even go beyond that. So we are ensuring that our policy, which we have recently rolled out, we are also providing uh, up to um, three years of uh, work, hybrid working while uh, Mahindra believes in the philosophy of working at, at, at place. Uh, but uh, for, for a new mother, we are providing the flexibility of a hybrid working uh, for the women employed for the period of first uh, for three year one year sabbatic provided up uh, for uh, women for mothers who have child up to the age of 12 years of age they can decide at any point in time to take a one year of sabbatical uh, in order to focus on the education of the kids so huge amount of uh, uh, policy changes have been brought in in order to ensure that uh, the employees both in terms of infrastructure in terms of policy yeah. in terms of intent and openness uh, we support the inclusiveness bit and the diversity uh, part specifically so okay, i was reading about the policy and i was about to highlight this i i read a few comments from the industry experts and and members of the automotive community farm community uh, they were calling it as a game changer and in in one of its kind which will benefit uh, women across uh, india uh, thank you for highlighting those. Uh, Sanket, I'll just combine uh, one question. Uh, I, I had three or four in mind, but I'll just combine it into one. When, when we talk about hiring in farm industry, what, what specific skills or qualifications are typically sought after when you look into a candidate? And, and your, your answer might be related to Sanket from an HR lens. Do you feel the actual hiring managers have a difference of opinion here or, or they go in sync uh, what the candidate is having. Yeah. So uh, let me let me start by saying what we do not now, what we are not focusing on and what we are focusing on is a need for a person to be coming from the farming industry. And this is a big exercise. Obviously, it was not a natural um, you know, way of putting it, uh, the first thing that you would need to look in a resume would be to see uh, what kind of companies the person has worked into, whether the person has worked into a uh, competitor uh, company in a, in, a, in a farming industry or not. We have worked a lot with our managers to say that that cannot be a prerequisite for working in a farming industry. So first of all, what we are not looking for is not that uh, it's an added advantage to have an experience into a similar industry, but it's not a must. As long as you are conceptually clear in the function that you belong to, if you are conceptually clear in the sales function, if you're conceptually clear in the marketing, if you're conceptually clear in manufacturing or any of the areas within the product development, that it will be the criteria for, for the selection. More than that, we are currently looking at is, uh, and, and we will have a lot of people who are experienced in different uh, domains, but what we are looking as a, as a, um the desirable aspect is uh does the person have the passion for the purpose that we have and that is i think a big big uh, requirement uh, in order to be working in a farming industry the purpose itself is such a such a uh, huge purpose that i think there, there shouldn't be any other motivation required for someone to be working in a farming sector the purpose of 
making a difference into the life of someone and now they are not even talking about making indirectly directly making a difference into the life of someone uh is should be and enriching lives of the people should be the biggest purpose and we want people who are very passionate about uh, about this purpose a lot of times people will be required to um uh, to be connected with the farmers to understand uh, their pain points and this can be done only if you are married to that purpose our sales people still go to the farm still we connect with the people it is not only by way of a digital uh, connection no not only by way of phone call or by way of a, a digital campaign we still go to the villages our uh, sales uh, territory managers day in and day out are in the farm uh, interacting with the farm uh, farmers in order to understand and in order to speak their language so i think a passion for the farming industry or for 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 the purpose that we stand for is something that that that's a very very big uh topic uh, when we are hiring the people sanket i feel like doing more uh, into my questions only but uh, i'll be taking a few audience questions which my hr colleague has put in i'll i'll just read it out for you sanket so uh, one of our uh, audience uh, member have asked a question are these tractors having autonomous vehicle features what skills are needed for such technology so that candidates can learn them so autonomous is related from the hiring perspective maybe if, if these features are building in do candidates yeah. need to learn new or, or uh, what what's your take yeah so autonomous yes autonomous uh, features and it is a little different than an autonomous uh, feature so when you talk about a car the autonomous features is completely different aid as you talk about autonomous uh, driver assist system so that's a different uh, thing altogether it's a much much evolved Uh, system when we are talking about autonomous system when we are talking about in a in a uh, farming for a tractor just to give you an example the equipment which is connected to a tractor needs to be lifted and needs to be positioned in the right way so that it can penetrate the soil at the right at the right amount at the right depth and that kind of autonomy autonomous uh, controls are required in a in a tractor so yes autonomous is is required but it is required in a different way um, as compared to what would be required in a car where where they are talking about a uh, uh, autonomous driving driverless car it's a driverless tractor is something which is also in a concept stage we are also working on a driverless tractor we are also there i saw a question which is relating to electric tractors electric tractor is something that we are also working on and i think there is a lot of requirement uh, we've recently launched a kind of a project uh to work very focused on electric tractors my personal take is the electric tractor is a little in future uh, our customers are still not ready not i would say not ready the customers are ready but the price point that we are able to give currently that we are able to make a electric tractor versus the price point tractor which is a uh, uh, which is a fuel uh, traditional fuel based tractor there is still a gap and all the said and done the farming industry the farming customer is very very cautious so they are not so much worried about environment uh the stage 4 tractor uh, trem 4 is still uh, got pushed so much now up, up to 50, uh, above 50 hp category the uh, trem 4 has been implemented uh now but there is a cost involved because to meet the trem 4 emission norms you need to have a crd engine and engine crd engines are not there uh, in most of the tractors not have a crd engine an additional cost so a farmer will be very cost sensitive will be not so much worried about the uh, about the technology but i think we don't have an option tractor will become a need of future and we will invest now and we are already doing it enormous tractor will become a need of the future we are investing on it uh, right now as well sure sanket only we have uh, one minute left for this session i'll i'll be very quick in asking uh, two more audience questions uh, uh, sanket how is mahindra uh, bridging the gap between traditional farming practices and modern technology for farmers in rural areas this is one of the question asked by our, our audience member yeah and this we are doing with something which is our advisory services uh, there is an initiative called krishi if you want to visit any of the mahindra dealership you will see a krishi center uh, side by side 
we are actually working with the uh, with the farmer to educate them of what all is available and by the way it is not available at a additional cost no so we are actually demonstrating them the cost versus um uh, the benefit and this is how we are trying to bridge it as i was telling in, uh, in one of the earlier questions farmers will not believe what you say you have to demonstrate it so technique plot that thousands of technique plots that we have currently where we have demonstrated uh, the use of technology in order to improve farming so that is the way that we want to do and that's the only way that 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 will probably work um, to to the mindset of the farmers in in the last question from the audience sanket is 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 mahindra or in what ways mahindra is collaborating with education institutions and startups to promote innovation and skill development in, in your industry in farm industry basically agriculture and technology yeah so we we work a lot with the government so there is a skill uh, development program which gover state governments are are uh, have uh, launched and we are actually training technicians and these technician not just for us but this uh, we are uh, making them more employable and uh, we are spending a lot of money in order to um, in order to train them to take on the technical roles specifically uh, if you talk about uh, educational institutes uh, we have a tie up with a lot of agricultural institutes wherein agri colleges wherein we go and hire hire also uh, agri trainees i think uh, one of the questions that that might be there is there an opportunity to freshers yes opportunities for freshers because we have tie up with this agri universities we do projects with the agri universities we also partner with them in some of the initiatives that that we do for the far farming and uh, typically every uh, uh, college pass out will be put first into a sales function go and uh, uh, do the sales of the tractors in the farm farming um uh, in the, in in the farms connected with the farmers and then grow from there can move into different uh, roles uh, from uh, from agri to from sales to say manufacturing or would want to go into uh, something which is a service kind of a role as well thank you so much sanket i am sure uh, we'll be connecting again for a different topic uh but with this we come to an end of this exciting session thank you so much for your time uh for joining us today and sharing your views uh thanks to all our audiences for joining us uh, friends this is just a beginning uh we have some very exciting sessions that will follow through in the coming weeks uh to get details please join the career circles community with the link shared in the chat window and do follow us and uh, if you have any queries if you have any questions which you want me to ask sanket offline and we'll revert you you can write back to us career circles at the red tag dot in and an apologies if i have missed your question uh, we had a limited time but for sure we'll be coming back with, with sanket again so okay, thank you so much for sharing all your views thank you navid and uh, again uh, thank you for people those who joined in apologies i usually am very passionate so i go overboard when when i'm talking about the farming um, industry and the farming roles but uh, i hope that was useful information Absolutely, Sanket. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.